Welcome to St. Paul TV, a production of the Media and Technology Ministry of St. Paul AME Church. The vision of our ministry is to build upon the whole person by providing theologically sound biblical teaching, effective worship, commitment to family, and an emphasis on understanding personal purpose. Our church school begins at 9.30 on Sunday morning. Worship service begins at 10.45. We have Bible study every Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Thanks for stopping by and enjoy a word from God. Mary and Martha were so happy, it was wonderful. 
All he did was be kind and heal people. Remember when he healed the blind man? He told us an interesting story. What will his disciples do now? What will we do? Why did they kill him? He didn't do anything. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. The, the people were listening to Jesus and the religious leaders got jealous. Jesus was telling us about loving each other and not just strict laws. Jesus really cared about people. The religious leaders didn't like him saying he was the son of God, so they killed him. Sacrifice to save us from our sin. 
Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of the rule. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, Stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Korathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. And they arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of his holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endured forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambush against the children of Ammon. Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. The title of today's word is A Position of Power. A Position of Power. Within many is a desire to obtain power. And, and that's not always a negative thing. People may have diverse reasons for desiring power. Francis Bacon said the desire of power in excess calls the angels to fall. Baruch Spinoza is quoted as saying ambition is the moderate or, or excess desire for power. I agree with both philosophies but there is a positive aspect of power also. I, a desire for excessive power beyond purpose and design will eventually result in our demise, but a lack of power may prohibit us from reaching our full yes. potential. Jesus. When we find ourselves in a weakened position of power, it becomes very difficult to demand change from forces which may benefit from our weakness. Resulting in repetitive cycles of underperformance. You see, folk where it seems like generations just continue to under underperform. And a lack of power what can happen is after we become accustomed to underperforming, then it becomes our identity, who I am. 
when we become accustomed to even underperforming as a ministry, just simply coming in, singing some songs, reading the scripture, saying our hellos, then going to the world and not making a difference, not causing a, a part of change. Go ahead. Just accustomed to underperforming. Oh, and then it becomes our identity. We read the scriptures that talks about the, 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 the church as, as this, 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 this entity that's, that's able to be used by God to transform the world. But then when we, when we look at our ministries, we see our ministries are... We simply come together, read some scriptures, sing some songs, collect some money, and then wait until the next time to come together, read some scriptures, sing some songs, and collect some money. But not effecting change in the world around us. It, it becomes our identity, even personally. In, in our lives personally, we can, can constantly see underperformance all around us. As we were in the, the Senior Appreciation Day yesterday, we had all the young people that, that were serving as hosts and hostesses. And as the, the young kids that, that are in our, our Hammond Achievement Scholarship Program and, and our young men and young ladies of excellence mentoring program, they were coming up and, 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 and assisting us with the drawings. And, and the reasons why I not only call their names, but I call their grades, and I know their grades. They have to turn turn them in um, weekly and, and every nine weeks. And, and the reason why I, I call their grades out is because I, I want to, to show that there, there are some high performers, Amen. even right. in the midst of us. Amen. And I, I don't want those high performers to feel that in some kind of way there's something wrong with them. I, I want them to, they, they, with, our, with our school, the St. Paul School of Excellence, the theme is excellence is the expectation. Go ahead. When we set our expectations low, our performance will be low. That's right. mm -hmm. When we set our expectations high, I don't care yeah. what type of disability they label the child with. I, I, I don't care what they've identified the child to be, what type of disability. I, I'm not, if we set high expectations, yeah. We'll be surprised what we can get out of people. And even spiritually, if we make excuses and say, well, God knows my heart. He knows I'm only human. And we make excuses to, for low living. Go ahead now. What will produce is low living. But when we say that I will look to the hills from what's coming to my help. And understand that all of our help comes from God. We'll, we'll be able to say with conviction, I can do all things yeah. through Christ. There's, a, there, there's no sin, there's no addiction, there's no habit, there, there's nothing out there that I've been exposed to all of my life that has to have a grip on me. Scripture says that the children's teeth are no longer set on the edge because the, the, the fathers ate sour grapes. And essentially what that says is, is now that, 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 that where, where generational curses did take place, but, but now because of, because of power that I can obtain through Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter if my father or my mother was an addict or a failure or, or even absentee. It, it, it doesn't matter if I've never seen my father in my whole Go life. It, it doesn't matter if my mother didn't train me up to be a strong young woman. It, it doesn't matter if I didn't have positive examples around me that I can put my faith in God and he can call me to achieve more than anyone ever imagined that I could do. But I have to be in a position of power. Yeah. When I'm in a, in a, in a weakened position, yeah. those that benefit from my brokenness, yeah. there are folks that benefit from my brokenness. The, folk, the, the person with the addiction, there are some folk that benefit from your brokenness. 
those of us that, 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 are, that are in situations to where we're strong and healthy, but we're deceived and to, to dependent on the government to, 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 to assist us with our, with our living, there are folk that depend on that. Those of us that are caught up in cycles of, of criminal behavior, there are folk that, that pay mortgages and live and have comfortable lives. They, 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 they put more money into prisons than they put into school. There are folk that benefit from our weaknesses. And spiritually, there are evil forces out there that benefit from us not knowing how much power we really have. Go ahead. The enemy benefits from, from us thinking that, that, that we're not able to do what God has told us that we can do in our word, in his word. Right. And continue underperformance, it becomes our identity. In verses 14 through 15. It says, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jair, the son of Metaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And 15 says, and he said, hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. Don't be afraid, don't be dismayed by reason of this big problem that you have confronting you. Has anyone in there ever had to, had to deal with, with, with the major issues? Issues that seemed as if they would take you out. There's no way in the world with my limited resources, my limited power that I can overcome this mountain. He said, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. Go ahead. It's not even your battle. All right. It's God's battle. Yes, sir. There's somebody in here right now. You're facing a mountain. Yeah. You're facing a multitude of issues. Uh -huh. You're facing a multitude of obstacles. And the enemy has tricked you into believing that this obstacle is more powerful than your God. But he says, don't be afraid. Neither be dismayed. The Spirit of God came upon Jehaziel and gave him the boldness to speak to the people. And King Jehoshaphat in the face of what appeared to be a looming defeat and destruction at the hands of the Moabites and the Ammonites and, and others. Jehoshaphat the prophet, he spoke a word under the influence. He probably should have been charged with a PUI. You know when, when you operate a vehicle while under the influence of alcohol, they charge you with a DUI. Because you are not sober and fully rational in your thinking. And I imagine some folk may have thought Jehaziel was not sober nor rational in his thinking. Based on, look at verses 1 through 3. I'll tell you what they were facing. In verses 1 through 3, the scripture says, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and, and with them other beside the Ammonite came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And then it says, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on the this side of, of Syria. And the whole they be in Hazon Tamar, which is in, in Gid. And in three it says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. The Bible says, that, that all of the enemies came together. Have you ever been in that situation before where, where it seems that the enemy comes together, finances and health and, and all types of issues come together and attack you at one time? And the Bible says that the great multitude came to attack the people of God and it says that the king of the people of God said that he was afraid, but he says he set himself to seek the Lord. Yes and to proclaim a fast throughout all of Judah. He was afraid, but he wasn't stupid. He, right. he was afraid, but he yeah. knew to turn hey. to God. Yeah. And so that's where we find ourselves in verses 14 and 15. And, and I agree that he was neither rational, uh, that he was neither rational nor powerless in his thinking. 
Satan, when in verse 14 and 15, Jehaziel, when he prophesied under the influence of the Spirit of God, and he said, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not dismayed, do be not afraid, nor dismayed right. by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but it's God. Anybody in here this resurrection Sunday morning, is there anybody in here that, that needs to be charged or ready to be charged with a PUI? Prophesying under the influence. I understand what the situation looks like, but the Spirit of God has told me that this battle is not mine, it belongs to God. And so if it's cancer, if it's poverty, whatever it is, some type of cyclical disease that tries to destroy my mind, I'm under a PUI. The Spirit of God has told me that I am not, I don't need to be afraid nor dismayed. And so I won't waste a second crying and complaining. I won't waste a second doubting our God because God has said it's all worked out. In verses 16 and 17, uh, the prophet says, uh, Now tomorrow, uh, I want you to go down against them. Uh, I know it seems uh, unattainable. Uh, I know it seems uh, difficult. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, they have a great multitude. Uh, all types of forces uh, have come together uh, for the sole purpose uh, of destroying the people of God. Uh, but he says, Tomorrow, uh, I want you to go down against them. And when you hear a word like this, it sounds like God is preparing you to go into battle. He says, go down against them because they're coming by the cliff of Z. And you'll find them at the end of the brook, right before the wilderness of Jerusalem. And then he goes on in verse 17 and says, now when you get there, you won't need to fight in this battle. He says, what I need you to do is first set yourselves and then stand still and then see the salvation of the Lord. He says, oh Judah and Jerusalem. You're wondering who Judah is and who Jerusalem is. Well, Jerusalem represents the people of God. But Judah also represents uh, an even larger force. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that Jesus uh, was in the tribe of Judah. And when he died uh, and was resurrected from the dead, uh, it says that those that came along like me, uh, who didn't have parents from Jerusalem, uh, who didn't have Jewish blood uh, through my veins, uh, it says that when I believed in Jesus, uh, it says he adopted me uh, into the family. I'm not in the tribe of Levi, nor the tribe of Reuben, but I am of the tribe of Judah. Some wonder why I praise that God praise. That was the job of those in Judah to give God praise because they realize that I used to be out, but now I'm in. I used to be excluded, but now I'm in. I used to be down, but now I'm up. He says, oh, Judah and Jerusalem, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, but tomorrow go out against them, and guess what? You won't be by yourself. He said, the Lord will be with you. God knew the detailed plan. He knew exactly what the enemy would be doing. He knew it how, and he knew exactly what his people needed to do to be victorious. He said, I want you to go down there, and this is exactly where they'll be, and this is exactly what they'll be doing. He's God, God knows the enemy's plan. Everything that the enemy has planned to destroy you, God knows every detail about it. Every plan that the enemy has to tear you down, God knows everything about it. That person that's addicted and that dealing with trying to, to be released and, and released from an addiction. God knows the plan of the enemy. God knows the enemy is going to be on that corner. And so that's why some 
sometimes he tells you, don't go on that corner. Huh? God knows the enemy huh, is going to try you this week. Huh? And that's why he pushed you huh, when you didn't want to come to church this morning. Huh? He gave you that extra push huh? because there was a word that you would need huh, when the enemy tried you this week. Huh? He knows the plan of the enemy, huh? every detail of it. Huh? There's nothing that the enemy can throw in our face huh, that can surprise God. Huh? We have somebody on the inside. Huh? It's good to have an informant. Huh? We have somebody on the inside huh, that knows the plan of the enemy huh, that says he comes to steal, kill, huh, and destroy. Huh? But then God knows everything it is huh, that we need to do huh, in order to be victorious. Huh? And the first thing he told them, huh, he said, I want you to go down huh, against them. Huh? You know what he said? Go down huh, against them. Huh? Down, not up. Huh? Let me know that the enemy huh, is not even on our level. Huh? We got to go down. Folk huh? coming against you and trying to tear you down, huh? they're not even on your level. Huh? You don't even need to waste your time worrying huh? or complaining huh? or fighting. Huh? Why would you waste your time crying huh? over somebody that's not even on your level? Huh? He said, go down huh? against them. Huh? When you go down there, don't even have your boxing gloves on. When you go down there, you know how when you get ready to fight, first you try to see if you can scare them by mean mugging them. Well, he said you don't even have to mean mug. He said it's not going to be your job to fight. He said go down there and you won't have a lead to fight. But he said what you need to do is set yourself and then stand and then see. Oh, what? God do God. He's good at being God. He said you set yourself and then you stand and then you see God do his thing. And he said fear not nor be dismayed. Just prepare to go and the Lord will be with you. He said just get yourself ready. Get yourself ready to go down and watch God show up. There's somebody here right now. You need to be getting yourself ready. Because the enemy seeks to destroy you. But God wants to exalt you. The enemy seeks to bring you down. But God wants to lift you up. God saying right now, I'm giving you instructions on what it is that you need to do to be prepared. There's some folk in here this morning. God is speaking to you. He's speaking a word. Because I might not see you until next Easter. And so God says today, I want you to hear this word. Because the enemy seeks to destroy you. But God says, I love you. And I don't want you to be destroyed. Listen to the prophet as he speaks my word. God says, set yourself. Then stand. And then watch God be God. Don't be afraid. And don't be dismayed. God loves you. There's nothing that you've done out there that make that has made God stop loving you. Despite all of it, and all of us sitting in here, we looking holy and looking religious, but we were in the muck too. We got a testimony too. We got some stuff we can't tell you. It's so hard to be that you find yourself. No, you just in the process. But God says, I'm ready to bring you out. I'm ready to give you power. You've been walking with the limited power, but God says today, Resurrection Sunday, God said, I'll turn it around. I'll give you power. The Bible says uh, in 18 and 19, yeah. it says in Jehoshaphat, uh, he wasn't down there yet. Uh, we just practicing right now. Uh, it says in Jehoshaphat, uh, he bowed his head. Uh, that's the key. Uh, he bowed his head uh, with his face to the ground. Uh, that takes yeah. humility. Uh, many folk are not willing uh, to humble themselves uh, before the mighty hand of God. Uh, because in our minds, uh, we think we've achieved uh, some level of power. I want to let you know, uh, don't be deceived. Uh, your power uh, has a limit. Uh, but through Christ, uh, there's an unlimited power. And so this king, uh, he bowed his head. Uh, and then he laid down on the ground uh, on his face. Uh, didn't care about his king clothes. Uh, didn't care about what folks were saying. Uh, he just knew uh, that he was about to be the 
short. And if he didn't listen to what God said, it would be the end of his story. And there's some desperate folk in here today. You ain't trying to be cute. Yeah, you got all dressed up. But if God told you right now, if you get ugly for me, I'll work it out for you. On the next morning, 
Jehoshaphat. He rose up early the next morning as the prophet had instructed. And in verse 20, he declared, believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. If I can just get you to believe God, he about to face a huge obstacle. He about to face a tremendous opposition. But if you believe in God, he'll establish you. You know what it means to be established? It means I got roots and I ain't going nowhere.
to stand up and give him praise. St. Paul TV. St. Paul TV is a production of the Media and Technology Ministry of St. Paul AME Church, 85 Martin Luther King Avenue, St. Augustine, Florida. And if you were blessed, I want you to go and make a difference in this world. Make God proud of you. If you have a church home, go and make a difference in your church. 
If you're in need of a church home, a place to where you can be nourished and fed, I ask that you strongly consider making St. Paul AME Church your church home. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Now, if you believe in reaping and sowing, we invite you to be financial partners with St. Paul AME Church. This is good ground. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry, please visit our website at stpaulfamily.com and click on the Make a Contribution list. Remember, no matter where you have been, where you are, or where you're going, there is a place for you at St. Paul AME Church.